Hello guys, Ashley the Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today we have a new video. This time I'm here to like show my thoughts. <laughs> League of Legends is calling. Today I'm here to show my thoughts on the newer motherboards and the newer chipsets, the X570 motherboards. And for example, I'm also gonna tell you a bit of what I think about the, um, the overclockability of the new motherboards and the new chipsets and how far can the Ryzen's go or don't go at all. And well, that's basically it. This will be a really small video on my fast thoughts of these chipsets and these motherboards. That's all. Just this and a little bit of intro. So don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share the video if you like it. And let's now go to the really interesting part. Well, recently we have been receiving some X570 motherboard leaks from video cards and today we have two more motherboard leaks. We had previously seen a Biostar motherboard, another colorful motherboard which aesthetically seems pretty neat if you ask me and now we have two more motherboards, this time from MSI. The motherboards presented are X570 Carbon, a high-end tire motherboard, and for the lower end we have the MSI X570 Gaming Plus. The MSI X570 Carbon, from what it seems, features a 12-phase VRM, which should deliver more than enough power for overclocking. This, of course, because the new Ryzen's are expected to have a higher core count and a way higher frequencies. As for the socket, it is powered by an 8 plus 4 pin connector configuration and we also have the usual 4 DDR4 DIMM slots that can support up to 64GB of RAM. Interestingly, DDR4 supported clock speeds aren't shown for now, but from what we've seen before on the Biostar X570 Racing GT8, we should expect higher than 4000 MHz with good RAM kits, for example Samsung BDI or Inix CJR. Another interesting point is the PCI Express 4.0 that wasn't supported on the previous chipsets and from what I know it is still not supported by anything but X570 motherboards. As for the storage we have the usual 6 SATA 3 ports, 2 M2 slots working with PCI 4.0 4 times, which are shielded with the metal heatsink extended from the main PCB heatsink which I don't like that much by the way but anyway that's what we have. Now the lower end X570 Gaming Plus. Apart from the obvious aesthetic difference compared to the Carbon 1 of course, the differences aren't so big per se. We seem to have a reduced overclocking potential on higher end chips due to the reduced 6 or 8 phase VRM supply as compared to the 12 phase supply on the Carbon. We still have the normal per se 6 SATA 3 ports connections whatever you call it, and two M2 SSD slots. So the main different points are aesthetics and VRMs. But after all, what is the similar thing on all these X570 motherboards that were shown till now? Yes, the damn chipset fan. From what I remember, apart from really high-end chipsets, chipset active cooling isn't a thing for years. This leads me to believe that the overclocking potential, being its CPUs or RAMs of course, will be astonishing, which will put a lot of stress on the chipset and requiring active cooling. But that is nothing new of course, if the leaks on the Ryzen 3000 series come to be true, we can expect speeds up to 5GHz on 12 cores and 24 threads, and that is something that would put a lot of strain on the motherboard, even if we are talking about 7 nanometers lithography. And of course, we also have the PCI 4.0 which will also help in that department. And well, there isn't much more to say in fact, it seems that things will change quite a bit with the newer generation and its design. Like for example the I.O. and the chiplets, more cores and higher frequencies, improved data pipeline and this amongst many other changes. But one thing is for sure, I think the leaks are pretty accurate and even if they are wrong they won't be far from reality. This will be a great year for PC hardware. And well guys, that's mostly it. What I think about the overclockability of these motherboards 
is that they will be uh, very good. The overclock ability, per se, if this is a word, whatever, uh, it will be really cool because, well, the first, the first thing I think of, like I said previously, is the, um, the active cooling on the chipset. So it means if, if we need active cooling, per se, it, it means that the, um, the chipset will be stressed. So if the chipset will be stressed, that means that the overclock ability should, should, it's maybe not uh, that way, but it should be very good. Um, and for example, 8 cores, 16 threads going up to 5 GHz, and for example, the 12 cores and 24 threads, 24 threads uh, on the mainstream, going up to, let's say, 4.8 or even 4.7, 4.6 GHz, will stress a lot the, the motherboard and so the chipset will heat um, so it will need active cooling. That's my my first thought of it. The second thought is that from what I know um, from what I know the um, the Infinity Fabric mesh and all that crap will be uh, separated. For example now we have a thing for input and output and we have the chiplets. We don't, uh, from what I know, uh, don't Take this with a grain of salt because I'm not really an expert on this, but from what I know, uh, the CCX will be quite different. We have now the the chiplets, for example, the chiplets, and we have the input and output out. Uh, so we don't have uh, inner CCX latencies, but we have the input output latencies, but then they will change Infinity Fabric and uh, it will not be connected to memory speed, memory RAM speed, so DDR4 speeds, or frequencies anymore so it will have its own frequency which will be good because if let's say if you have 3200 megahertz rams your uh, sock speed or infinity fabric speed will be half of that so 1600 megahertz if we have the the frequency separated from the ddr4 free frequencies it means that it can it can go a lot a lot higher so for example uh, 3000 megahertz or even more and that will make a lot of difference on the inner latencies so we still have the latency from the input output um, but on the other side we have a way way higher infinity fabric speed to connect with cores and etc so it will be it will still be uh, a gain gain situation we'll have higher ipc will have higher frequencies which will contribute on the um, on the single core performance and on the multi core performance of course but mainly on the single core performance that's where uh, Ryzen is still losing to Intel CPUs um, and that's a really really good thing we have double the floating point if I remember correctly and well that all may in fact impact and stress the, the chipset that's why we need active cooling and well, like I said before, that, that's not much more to say, but I really, really think that the overclock ability will be really good because we have 7 nanometers, we have a jump from 12 nanometers FinFET to 7 nanometers. Uh, I don't really know if it is FinFET or not, um, but 7 nanometers, so higher frequencies, smaller things, uh, less heat, less voltage, um, and I'm really hoping on getting, for example, um, six, uh, six, not six, but five gigahertz, for example, on the, the Ryzen 5 30, 3600, which will have eight cores and 16 threads, if the leaks are correct. And well, I won't make this video uh, much longer. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share the video, because that really helps a lot. And tell me what you think. Uh, tell me your opinion on the comment section, because I really want to know it. Uh, and also, check these videos because they are really awesome and you may have interest on them. One more time, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.